Here we go back to chapter 16. You are to appoint judges, officers, and officers for all your gates in the city. I don't know your God is giving you. In the cities, in the homes. I don't know your God is giving you. Tribe by tribe. And they are to judge the people with righteous judgment. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter 5. John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse 12. Yeshua spoke to them again. I am the light. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. If you are following him on this path, the light is directly before you. You follow him, you will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives life. And here we see that, yes, you'll have the light because you're following the light. But if we look at what we just read in Matthew, he's saying, no, not just you're following my light and through the darkness, you're following the light, my path. It says the Torah, his word is a light to our path, a lamp to our feet. And he is that embodiment. But given what he said in Matthew chapter 5, he is not only saying that we will follow his light, we will have his light, and we won't walk in darkness because we're walking with him. He ultimately is saying, you will become that light. You are that light. You are that city on the hill. The light of the world placed himself within you, within each and every one of us, so that we can light up the world. So, what do we have here? We have this body, this human body, that we are this body of Messiah. But he also dwells within us. And this human body is a sin. So let's go back to chapter 16. You are to appoint judges and officers for all your gates in the cities. Adonai, your Hevathe, your God, your Elohim is giving you. So you appoint judges and officers over all the gates to your cities. And it's the, these, these gates in the city that he's giving you. Has he not given you your very existence? Now what are these judges supposed to do? Judge righteously, judge, have just judgments. They are to judge the people with righteous judgments. Well, in Judaism, and I'm sure in other places as well, there are seven gates into an individual. We've discussed this before when we spoke on your spirit, your soul, your inner flesh, and what that means in Hebrew many, many moons ago now. But your nefesh is in this, this abstract thing, your spirit is not this abstract thing as you see in spirituality and mysticism. But God specifically created this for you and who you are. In 
and sense it's a level of your consciousness. And not only that, he says, what you choose to do changes this. Your nefesh is made up of what you do, what you see, what you hear. And that's what we have in these scriptures here. These seven gates into the human body. There are two eyes, two ears. That's for the young people. Look, my 30 minutes with you is up. Two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, and one mouth. The sages taught that we must discriminate and regulate what should be admitted and what should be kept out. It is incumbent on us to set eternal judges and officers to enforce the judge's decision. This from the Sefte Cohen, which is the lips of the Cohen, written in six, uh, we live between 1621 and 1662. This is, this is the Jewish sages saying these things. We must discriminate and regulate what we allow to be admitted and what is kept out. It is incumbent on us to set these eternal judges and officers. And in Perke Avo, Ethics of the Fathers 4 8, it says, Do not judge alone, for no one can judge alone but the one. So, what does that look like for us? What does that look like for followers of Messiah? I'm telling you, you are this light, you are the city. Can you judge? Can you not judge? What does that look like? Here, Judaism says, one cannot judge. There has to be more than one. Ultimately, if there is the one judge, it is the one judge. In James chapter 4, verse 11 through 12, Brothers, stop speaking against each other. Whoever speaks against a brother or judges a brother is speaking against Torah and judging Torah. And if a judge, and if you judge Torah, you are not a doer of what Torah says, but a judge. There is but one giver of Torah. There is one giver of Torah. He is also the judge with the power to deliver and to destroy. Who do you think you are judging your fellow human being? This is a lot of times projected out, or saying we shouldn't judge other people. And there may be some truth to that. But what I want to bring to your attention today is are we not, in a sense, judges of ourselves? Are the ones who condemn us the most our own inner conscience, our own inner being? And, and here we're seeing, how are we judging? Are we judging righteously? Are we judging justly? Are we pursuing this perfect judgment in righteous living through the Scriptures, through the Word, and through Messiah? Another verse to reference about God being this judge is in Isaiah 33. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22. For Adonai, Yudhei is our judge. Adonai, Yudhei is our Lord giver. Adonai is, Yudhei is our king. And he will save us. If he is our judge, if he is our law giver, if he is our king, and he will save us, then how then do we save ourselves? Is it possible to save ourselves? Heaven forbid. That is what we see in the Brahma Shabbat, what we see in the New Testament writings. This is not something we can do on our own. But that does not mean we do nothing with this. As we read in Deuteronomy, if you are the city on the hill, if you are this light to the nations, you are to have judges and officers. A judge knows the law and rules on it, and the officers are the ones who act it out. Just as we see with the sages, talking about discriminating, discriminating and regulating against what is admitted and kept out, and they said it's incumbent, I love that word, incumbent on us to set eternal judges. Is it Nathan, the judge Nathan, the officer Nathan who chooses? What these eyes see, what these ears hear? 
with this with this nose that smells this, this pathway into my lungs, this, this breath of life that I'm supposed to be sucking in, the same place that Adam was breathed into by the Ruach, the Spirit of the Living God? Is it up for me to choose? And if I am the judge, how well do I think I'm judging? I encourage you to look at this in a deeper sense, my brothers and sisters. You are to appoint judges and officers. Have you appointed judges and officers within your nefesh, within your, your city, within your town? And if you have, who are these judges and officers? What authority do they have and where do they get it from? What authority do they have and where do they get it from? To say what is permissible and what is, what is not. As we read, there is only one judge in Lord God is his judge, my brothers and sisters. Why do I tell you this? I tell you this because we're living in a world that wants to choose for us what we allow into these gates, into these doorways. How? By the, the world's rules and regulations, the laws that they have created, the TV shows, the movies, the music, the things we eat, what we even breathe, and the air around us. I know you all are strangers to these thoughts and concepts, you're not strangers to the revelation that public television, public schools, chemtrails, processed foods don't have our best interests in mind. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon finishes in chapter 12, the last two verses, saying, here is the final conclusion. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the last two verses, so verse 13 and 14. Solomon, wisdom upon wisdom. And it's interesting, because this Torah portion talks about kings, and he didn't do a very good job according to what this Torah portion says. But we might get there today, I don't know. Only the Lord knows what we'll get to. Chapter 13 and 14. Here is the final conclusion. Not my final conclusion. Here is the final conclusion. Now that you have heard everything, fear God and keep His mitzvah, keep His commandments. This is what being human is all about. Why? For God, verse 14, for God, for God will bring to judgment everything we do including every secret, whether good or bad. It's not how I want to judge, it's how he judge, judges. He's the just judge. He judges justly. He has already pursued righteousness, pursued justice perfectly. He is that very definition. And when I stand before that just judge, how can that judge bring a ruling or accusation against me as his son, as his servant, as his slave, as his child, as a member of his body, if the very things I chose to do were based off of his rulings and his laws and what he established?